Hi, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome to another edition of this or that. <laughs> and what that is, is I ask you a question, has to do with yarn or crochet or crafting or ways to combine yarn and crafting, <laughs> different techniques and things like that. And when I ask you a question, remember, there are no wrong answers. I love to read your comments. I love to read what you have to say about what we're talking about in this video. And I think we can learn from each other. I can learn from you and you can learn from me. So please comment down underneath in that comment section. It's really important because I, like I said, we can learn from each other. All right, let's talk about what today's topic is. And that is free form crochet. And have you ever tried it? Well, when I was first learning to crochet, I would make these really odd, what I call swatches. And they sometimes looked like this. And what it is, is when I would learn a new technique or stitch, I would just add to it. I never heard of free form crochet. I just made these crazy swatches. Then I would put them all together and make something funny with it. You know, like maybe a blanket or, you know, sometimes I would sew them all together just to make blankets for the dogs. Not because I didn't want to waste it. And so <clears throat> what it is, the bottom line really is that free form crochet has no rules. You can use any fibers. And when it comes to these, you can mix your fibers. You can mix all your stitches. You can mix your colors. You can mix your thicknesses. There are no rules. So here's some odd different ones that I've done that I've held on to. This is one I, I've done many years ago when they first came out with some of that sparkle yarn. And I started it as a shell and then just kept going with it adding different types of stitches and techniques. And <clears throat> when I do this, eventually it becomes just a big scrap blanket that my dogs can use, or I can just throw on the back of a chair. And this is a different sort of technique. <clears throat> the shapes can be spirals. They can be whatever that shape is. <laughs> Here's a half circle. Here's a circle. And you can see each of these have different types of stitches in them. Here's a heart. Here's a shell. Here's a heart that I just sort of put together, you know, a few years ago when I was first looking into what exactly freeform crochet is. And of course, this is one of those old ones. Now, I'm going to show you the back. Look at that. All the strings are just hanging there. And you can weave those in as you go. I even tie knots on these crazy freeform things. Okay, and some of these have thicker yarns. Some of them have thinner yarns. Some of them have mixtures of wool, cotton. Some of them, I mean, they're just all different kinds of things. And this is just some of them. These pieces here, these are called scrumbles or scrumbling. When you start stitching them together, you just make a lot of different shapes from your leftover pieces and scraps. And I just throw them in a basket. And then when I want to put some of them together, this one I did as I went. You can see I put a corner in there and we've got some front posting. Here's some bobble stitches, shells, front post, back post. Here's some picots on this edge. So, you know, it's just a matter of just making as you go with no rules, no pattern, no specific colors, and no specific fibers. It's just fun. Now, making these scrumbles to form into freeform crochet is really not for everybody, but I'm telling you, it can be so fun and relaxing, especially, you know, patterns can sometimes be, you know, uh, frustrating, or maybe you don't understand what they're trying to say or where to put your stitch and things like that. And that's the fun of doing these type things because there is no rules. You don't even have to put your stitches in a stitch if you don't want to. You can put it next to the stitch. You can do five stitches instead of two. You can just mess around with it. And if it doesn't meet up, you know, like this one here, we did some picots on the edge here. And then I just finished off with some single crochets and some double crochets to fill in that spot and then just came around. And I know it's, it seems like, oh, that doesn't even make any sense. But that's the glory and the fun of this type of crochet. 
it's a great way to just grab your scrap basket no matter the fiber no matter the thickness of the yarn no matter any of that unless of course you want to be able to wash it and that's when you need to stick within one fiber but you can do thick cottons thin cottons even thinner cottons all together you know and just have fun and i like to do this sometimes when i'm extremely stressed there's a when there's a lot going on in my life you know um sickness and finances and family and all kinds of stuff even because even during the political season it there can be a lot of pressure and so sometimes we need to get away from all of that and just relax and that's what this kind of crochet does for me you just pick up your whatever crochet hook and the thing is it doesn't matter what crochet hook you use you can use whatever one you want you don't like how big it's coming out take it out use a smaller hook it's coming out too tight take it out use a bigger hook so that's why it's called free form crochet and really the bottom line of it is there's no rules there's no techniques there's nothing you have to do you just grab your scrap yarns and have some fun make weird shapes make fun shapes i mean this one's just all over the place you know and even this one that i'm working on that's round you can see i did all different kinds of stitches yarns and techniques and um the thing is when i've done these in the past and then i put all these pieces together that we called scrumbles it's called scrumbling and you end up putting all these pieces together and it's really, really pretty. It really is. And you, and it's another one of those things where you think, oh, those colors don't look good together. But then you put them all together and you're like, wow. One of the things that I have found also is to use the really bright colors up next to some of the more pastel colors. And it makes it all pop. Uh, and a good example of that is like on this one right here. I've got this bright red here in the center. And then we've got some pink up here. And see how up against the darker red and purple how it just pops out there yeah you know and whatever it kind of looks like a stocking doesn't it <laughs> a really bad one <laughs> but that's okay because that's the fun of this type of crochet and if you've never just done this I really encourage you to do it and you can go online and find free patterns for scrumbling and they'll call them they call them scrumble patterns and they're things like these they call them amoeba circles or shells or hearts and different things you know like this half circles and practice with some of those and then as you go like even this one i started with that shell and then i went on and did other things around okay and you don't have to go around you can do whatever that you want and it's a really great way to practice stitches like i said at the beginning of the video when i first started crocheting all those years ago i can't remember if i was like 13 14 or 15 but it was in that age range and i spent a lot of time at the library and i would take my yarn bag with me and i would just pour over crochet books and i remember one time the librarian over i would take those books from the adult sections they didn't have any in the kids section and i take them over and sit on the edge there because there was like the whole kids section and then the then it would go into like the adult section it wasn't a real big library it's bigger now but um she came over and she said what you doing and i told her i said oh i've got my yarn and some hooks and i'm trying to learn how to crochet and she would help me find the books that i was looking for and one of them that she handed me was one on freeform crochet and um it was like a new and uh hippie fantastic sort of thing that they were doing and I was mesmerized with it because I was already doing a lot of that stuff. Uh, just having fun, practicing stitches, and because I didn't have a lot of money in those days to buy yarn. And there were a couple ladies at church that would give me their old um, skeins of yarn. They were called Seville or Sale or something like that. It was Walmart yarn. You know, inexpensive acrylic yarn. I had some others from a place, from a store called Woolworths. I don't know if you all remember those. And I would save up my allowance um, and I would go to Walmart and not Walmart, Kmart. It's a Kmart yarn. The Sayel, I think is what it is, is a Kmart yarn. And I would go in. My sister worked at Kmart, my older sister. And I would go with her to work and uh, shop and hang out and bring my yarn and um, 
uh, you know, buy some more yarn while I was there with my allowance. And then she'd run me home on, on her lunch break or something like that during the summer. And I just had so much fun with it. And the thing, the thing is what in crochet, there are so many rules. Don't tie knots, you know, um, make sure you put the right amount of stitches on every row or the, or the pattern doesn't work out. Follow the pattern. Do what the designer said. You know, use the correct yarn. Use the correct crochet hook. This is a way for you not to have to do that. You know, I, I remember one time I got in trouble at school and I and I made the statement, I was talking too much, okay? And they set me aside, told me you're talking too much or you're gonna you're gonna have to sit by yourself if you don't stop talking. And I remember saying to my teacher, Well, rules are made to be broken. And I got in so much trouble. <laughs> But you know what? Crochet is the same way. If we always stick so strictly to just this perfect, you know, thing, I think that maybe we're losing some of the fun of it. And yes, we want the patterns that we make to turn out right. We want the stitch counts to be right. We want the right yarn, the right hooks and all that stuff. And we want things to fit right. But there's also, I think, a good time to learn how to do freeform crochet. And I love the fact that there are no rules. If you want to tie a knot, honey, tie a knot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you don't want to weave in your ends yet, wait till the end. Weave them in then. You know, it, it's just a whole different thought process when it comes to freeform crochet. And one of the things that I have found as I've gone, because I'll do it for a while, then I'll go to something else and then I'll pick it back up, you know, and I keep a, it's an old zipper plastic bag that a comforter came in. And I keep a lot of the, what I call the really small yarn balls, the ones that only have a couple of yards on them. And I throw those in there and then I use it for this. And I pull it out every now and then and make some more scrumbles. And then I throw them all back in there. And then when I get enough, I put them all together and make something. And um, it's really fun. You can make like, uh, like I have three grandkids. I could easily make three fun placemats that they know are theirs every time they come over to my house and things like that. You could make anything out of them. You could make silly hats and sweaters and I mean even a wonderful fun bedspread. I mean just by making tons of scrambles and putting them together. All right so in my opinion the most important thing about free form crochet is just finding your own style okay um like i said don't follow the crochet rules do what you want and i plan on keep going with this one adding more scrumbles to it and the same thing with this circle i'm going to do the same thing and you can see all the fast color changes where i'm saving all the smaller balls of yarn I have this thing where I just cannot throw away yarn and I know that it comes from many years ago when we didn't have a lot of money and I cherished every bit of yarn that I had. If I made a scarf and there was a little bit left, I saved that and I added it to my scrumbles. Okay, and so anyway, that's what freeform crochet is. Doing your own thing. Crocheting your own way. Finding your own style. All right. So here's my question to you on our this or that question. Do you do freeform crochet? Have you tried it? And what is your opinion on it? Would you try it? <laughs> All righty. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you will try freeform crochet and really enjoy it because like I said, it is the best stress reliever because you don't have to follow a pattern you can do what you want and just have you know even just a half hour of relaxing time all right well thanks for being with me today and i'll see you next time on another edition of this or that or the other thing <laughs> bye bye now <laughs>